Hello, this is John Sheffield. The title of my presentation is Global Trends on Hydrogen Economy Market. I am a professor from Purdue University in West Lafayette, Indiana, the United States. I also serve as the president of the International Association for Hydrogen Energy. I'm excited to share with you some of my personal thoughts on global trends in the hydrogen economy market. First, the outline, we have three sections today, section coupling in the energy industry, transition to green hydrogen, and hydrogen economy market. A new term is sector coupling. When we consider power sector, heat consumption sectors, transportation sectors, gas producing sectors, energy storage, heat storage, gas storage, fuel storage. And the connections, the sector coupling, comes from the power to X. So, for example, in the electric power sector, it means electrifying transport, heat consumption, and every sector which hasn't already been electrified. Also, for the gas production sector, it means the opposite, delivering green hydrogen via power to gas or power to hydrogen, as we might say. Also, for the transportation sector, it means everything, all of the previous, all of the above. So let's look at how this becomes integrated. The sector integration, green hydrogen offers valuable advantages. For example, if we have offshore wind or onshore wind energy, renewable, solar PV, through the grid we can go feed that renewable electricity to electrolyze water and take that hydrogen into storage. And when needed, that hydrogen can be fed to the fuel cells to produce power again. Therefore, we call this sector approach integration as power to power. Alternative, we could take the renewable electricity, that power to electrolyze water, to generate hydrogen, and use that as injection into natural gas distribution system. Or an alternative is to take that green hydrogen and produce through a methanation process a thin synthetic natural gas. So we have this segue uh, of a power to gas pathway. Another pathway is to take the renewable energy from uh, the grid and power industry, electrolysis, producing the hydrogen and using that in industry or in other applications, power to industry. Another pathway is power to fuel, taking the renewable electricity, electrolyzing water and taking that to use in industry that has the um, fuel, the fossil fuel equivalent. Another pathway is power to mobility, electrolyzing water from renewable electricity and using that fuel, that hydrogen, to fuel fuel cell vehicles such as cars, buses, trains, boats, and ships. The Hydrogen Council suggested that hydrogen has seven major roles in the sectors, three that enable renewable energy systems, and four to decarbonize end uses. First, it enables large-scale renewable integration and power generation. Second, distribute energy across sectors and regions. And three, act as a buffer to increase system resilience. Four, to help decarbonize transportation sector. Five, help decarbonize industrial energy use sector. Six, help decarbonize building heat and power. And finally, serve as renewable feedstocks. The annual demand for hydrogen could increase by a factor of 10 by the year 2050.
from approximately 8 ecajoules in 2015 to 78 ecajoules in 2050, with the largest growth occurring in the transportation sector. At the top, we see the power generation, and in transportation at 22 ecajoules, the largest, and industrial energy, followed by building heat and power. And finally, the two components, existing uh, feedstock and new feedstock. The new feedstock would be uh, direct reduced iron and carbon capture utilization. Transitioning now into green hydrogen, section two. The transition to green hydrogen is important for us. We see in this chart multiple pathways for the production of hydrogen ranging from green, gray, blue, brown, and the last one from the local electric power grid. Let's turn our attention to the green pathway, produce green hydrogen. If the electricity comes from renewable energies, the hydrogen is known as green hydrogen. That is to say, renewable electricity electrolyzes water to produce that hydrogen, the green hydrogen. Next, we can look at hydrogen that's produced using various other methods, such as brown and gray hydrogen result in large emissions of carbon dioxide. So we see the natural gas steam methane reforming to produce gray hydrogen. We also see coal using coal gasification to produce brown hydrogen. However, if we take natural gas steam methane reforming process and go through the carbon capture and storage, we get blue hydrogen. Similarly, if we take coal going through the coal gasification using the carbon capture and storage technology, we have another pathway to produce blue hydrogen. The blue hydrogen is a low carbon process because of that carbon capture and storage. Now, let's turn our attention to the technology that we refer to in the sector coupling in the previous section. That is to say, power to gas. In this case, we have the future state of blending hydrogen into the natural gas distribution system to offset the carbon content of the fuel. The green hydrogen as an energy storage to ensure a constant and reliable source or supply of electricity. The surplus electricity from the renewable wind power plants and the renewable solar power plants must be stored for later use. So in the schematic we see from the uh, grid, in which case we may have renewable electricity from that microgrid, providing the electricity for electrolysis of water. The emission from that process is oxygen. The hydrogen is then compressed and stored. And then when needed, it can use the natural gas distribution system to provide the end use. Let's turn our attention in this uh, green hydrogen to Europe's hydrogen roadmap 2050. The European Union hydrogen strategy in May 2020, the, Un the European Union announced funding up to 30 billion euros to produce 1 million metric tons of green hydrogen per year as part of the economic recovery plan to continue its Green Deal and to confirm that European Union sees hydrogen as a key enabler and the goal to become carbon neutral by the year 2050. If we look at the first phase in the year 2020 through 2024, it includes the installation of six gigawatts of renewable hydrogen electrolyzers. Also in that phase one is the production of clean hydrogen. And in addition, the policy work and Euro de uh, denomination benchmarks by 2021. The second and perhaps the most important phase is 2025 through 2030, with a higher of 40 gigawatt capacity of electrolyzers, 
higher production of clean hydrogen, hydrogen storage for seasonal flexibility, and retrofitting of existing fossil fuel-based hydrogen production methods with carbon capture and storage. Phase three, in the years 2031 through 2050, we increase the renewable electricity production, use of hydrogen and its derivatives across a wider transportation sectors, and the creation of biogas from hydrogen paired with carbon capture storage to generate negative emissions. This is the Europe's Hydrogen Roadmap 2050, three phases. Now let's turn our attention to the hydrogen economy market. And as the title of the presentation, we're looking at global trends on the hydrogen economy market. One might ask the question, what has changed in the hydrogen economy market? That's a good question. Let's break that down into multiple parts. First, the global commitment to mitigate climate change and to focus on climate regulations is much stronger now than at any time previously in history. This is an important aspect of what has changed. Second, renewable energy costs have declined dramatically and are continuing to fall, significantly reducing the price gap between hydrogen from electrolysis, green hydrogen that is to say, and hydrogen derived from fossil fuels that as we referred to are gray and brown. Third, what has changed? Hydrogen and fuel cell technologies have experienced significant technical progress in their efficiency, durability, reliability, and cost reduction. This, of course, is critical and paramount to the success of the hydrogen economy market. And finally, the global transition towards electric mobility solutions. As we saw in the 2050 projections, that the largest component was in the uh, electrification and the transportation sector. So as we think of the hydrogen mobility as, as an extended range of the electric mobility solutions. The message from Europe voters and those too young to vote is loud and clear. They want real action on climate change, and they want Europe to lead the way. This provides countries like South Korea a great opportunity to impact the hydrogen economy market. Leading the way, the European Union adopted strategies for energy system integration in hydrogen, paving the way towards a more efficient, an interconnected energy sector driven by twin goals of a cleaner planet and a stronger economy. Remember those in the earlier sections, the sector coupling. The European Green Deal aims to make Europe the first climate neutral continent by 2050. Currently, energy production and use account for more than 75% of the European Union greenhouse gas emissions, more than 75% of EU's greenhouse gas emissions. There are hydrogen economy market opportunities to increase the use of renewable electricity via electrification of the sectors that currently still rely on fossil fuels. Again, the most important part is this sector coupling. That is the game changer in the hydrogen economy market, sector coupling. If we reflect, 2020 will forever be remembered as the year of COVID-19. It has been a period of challenge and of hardship, but also a profound mindset change. The global pandemic has impacted nearly everyone 
and force more of us to reflect on what we want our future societies to look like as it becomes increasingly clear that business as usual is not an option. As countries invest in economic recovery, we must invest in a world we want, not the world we have.